Anyway, we got on the road again, and we stopped. And we walked around the Druid Circle in the forest, and that is a large circular pit, like, oh my, how large would it be? Would it be like uh, 30, 50, 60, maybe 100 by 100? I'm not sure feet we're talking about. Um, maybe more. I can't judge very good. Um, and uh, it was dug out, and all the dirt was pushed up around the sides there. So they had a low circle there and the high sides. And that's where the rituals were. And then they could also fight people that come. Not too much, though, because they're coming over the top looking down at them. So that wasn't too much of a fight, I don't think. And the roads are very narrow. I don't think that they expected 50 people buses to come. You know, and they do. And once in a while we had to get off the road and wait and push over, not really wait, but just push over, you know, and they pushed over on the other side as far as they could, you know. And then once we did have to get off the road and wait while they did chipping. And they put down tar, one, one truck comes along with the tar, then comes another one with the gravel, and then a heavy machine going on by. Trivial, trivia. The loose gravel on the road is called chipping. So at Gus O'Connor's pub, I had a Guinness pint and the special. The special, a toasted ham with sharp cheese, tomatoes, and slices of onion and chips. And it was wonderful. Gosh, I hope I can duplicate that at home. I don't think so. I think that had a lot to do with the heavy bread, too. We went to Nap. K-N-A-P, Knapp Castle, and we had mead and honey. See, this was our farewell meal, and they came out all dressed in these spectacular um, old clothes, you know, from a long time ago. I think the mead and honey was whiskey and honey. Whatever it was, it was marvelous. <laughs> and the meal was marvelous. <laughs> and then we saw, like, a Midsummer Night's Dream. There was eight wenches on stage, and one dimpled old coot <laughs> who did a wonderful job on the stage. He needs to stop drinking the Guinness. His belly is come, getting ready to come over. It's too far out there. Well, I should talk. I have the same problem. But anyway, this was the farewell dinner, and there was other people there from other groups. But our Steve was given a spot on the show because... He was, he, was the, he was the one of the highlights of the show. He disregarded the rules that were given to us, and he looked at another woman, not his wife, and he smiled at her, and now he was on stage to pay the price for such folly. They were going to cut off his ears, or he could sing a song. Well, I don't know where it came from, but he somehow decided to sing. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. And everyone joined in and was laughing. And he upset the management's boat. I guess they thought, well, he won't know what to sing. You know, what would he sing? You know, what? It was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. Everybody was laughing and singing. <laughs> well, after that wonderful event, oh, God, we had a disaster at night. Sandy called home to tell her mother not to worry that we were far away from the fighting up north in Belfast because she says, oh, my mother will think we're right in the fighting, you know. And her mother is 90 years old. Well, she calls up and her, her husband says, He's, she's on her way to the hospital in an ambulance, you know. Then Sandy calls again. Then she calls again. Then we, she says, well... I don't know what to do. We'll just go to bed and sleep and see what happens. So we went to bed and we tried to sleep and we did sleep. And then at 3.30, here comes the telephone ringing, 3.30. Odessa had passed on. Oh my gosh. So we waited until 7 and then we called Maura and she got Sandy on an early flight. See. Uh, Steve and Julie and Joy and Dana were going home also. And they helped Sandy get on the plane because Sandy was leaving before any of them. And 
when she got uh, to Newark, her daughter was there. Her daughter lives in Newark, and she was there. Gwen was there, and so she she then she helped her out, and then Sandy can cry now when she's home. And I would have gone with her. I told her, Sandy, I'll go with you. But Sandy is like me. She's an independent lady, and she's a strong lady, and she was okay. <laughs>